Joining us now, former Illini head coach Teresa Grinch. Coach, it's great to see you. Mike, it's great to be back. It really is. Thank you. And uh, celebrating the 20th anniversary, it's hard to believe it's been that long, of the 1997 Big Ten Championship team. And uh, it's nice to see uh, you know, some of your former players here as well. It really is. You know, I call them the kids. And now they have kids that are almost in college. Uh, but it is. It's, it's hard to believe that that was 20 years ago and how much fun and everything that we had here. And, uh, you know, we filled this place, and uh, it was fun. Well, take us back in time. Talk about the decision, uh, Hall of Fame coach, national champion, Olympic coach, to, to take a chance and come to Illinois. Well, I just thought that it was the right thing to do at that particular time. Um, I really fell in love with the campus when I came out and met Ron Gunther and Bill Yonan and Carol Cars, and I thought, okay, we can do this. Um, you know, heard great things about the state, what was happening. I figured, okay, let's give this a run and let's really put our minds to it and uh, see what we can do. And, and the kids really responded. Nicole Vasey, Chris Ranking, Kelly Bond, and of course Ashley Berger and the crew, they really, really stepped up and responded. And they took it seriously. And I'm not sure they always liked me, but at the same time, they wanted to be good. They had great pride in themselves, great passion, and they loved Illinois, and they played like that. They played together. They played for each other, and you can see it in the things that they've done later on in their life, and um, to be able to come back now and celebrate with them after 20 years, um, <laughs> it's fun. Well, it, w wasn't, uh, it was an experience to come to Illinois women's games back then. Talk about what you were able to accomplish to get the community involved in such a short period of time to have the buy-in to have the sellouts at Huff and then eventually here uh, can you take us back in time to, to all the things that you did even outside of basketball to get the community so uh, interested and excited about the program well I think there was a lot of curiosity I think it's not, I'm not sure they always understood my accent <laughs> um, but we did you know Mike Raycraft was somebody who was a young guy. He was probably about 24 at the time in marketing, and uh, he and I really hit it off well. And we were selling not just basketball. We sold women's issues. We sold Title IX. We sold uh, the opportunity to really do something on a grand scale, not because the men do it, but because there's the opportunity to do it and obviously I spoke quite a bit throughout the state uh, I can remember my first uh, speaking engagement was set over in Danville and uh, they were not happy that they had the woman from women's basketball as their their speaker and they let me know that and I said well why don't you wait until I'm finished so when it was over the guy said to me well that was what we didn't expect that and I knew they had no clue about my being able to speak at that time and give a speech and a presentation and the late next year they called me up and said they wanted me to speak but I had to make sure that I wouldn't speak anywhere close on that date because they didn't want any kind of interference and I had to laugh about that <laughs> but again it was just more of an education process somebody stepping out of a you know comfort zone nobody did it this way but between the TV show that we did live I mean who in the right mind does a live TV show we had it on prime time we were 6 30 live on monday night and again it was a risk but we did a lot of different things on it uh, people got involved it was about the community how can i best serve you was my motto and uh, uh, the kids were great the players were great because i think when people were wanting to know what it was about and then they came in and they saw it they fell in love with the, with the kids and the players and they said they wanted to be a part of this it was something wholesome it was something fun and then we won, and that never hurt. Well, you talked about the buy-in, and, and nobody uh, bought in more than Ashley Berggren, and obviously was the All-American on that team. Can, what do you remember about her as a player and as a person? Ashley Berggren, on a good day, might have been 5'10". But she was fierce. Um, she was determined. I can remember my first or second practice. Um, I knew, we had a bunch of players, and I didn't know all the names and things, but I knew how many were supposed to be out there. So I looked out there at one time, and I said, somebody's missing. And somebody walked over, one of the assistants, Lavanda or Kathy, and said, it's, uh, it's Ashley Berggren. I said, where is she? She goes, she walked out. I said, we'll have her in my office. So the next day she came in, and she said, you know, sometimes I get really upset, and, and I'm going to get excited, and I have to walk out. 
And I said, well, that's good. You, you do that. I said, if that happens again, you do that. I said, but I want you to understand one thing. When you walk out that door the next time, don't you even think about walking back in. <laughs> So she went in and she talked to the, the assistants and they said, did you talk to Coach Grants? And she said, yeah, big help that was. And they said, well, what did she say? She said, if I do that again, I can't come back. And both of them looked at her, Renee and, and uh, uh, LaVon and Kathy, and looked at her and said, she means it. She means it. And from then on, it just got, they understood the fact that if you're going to be a champion, there's sacrifices going to have to be made. And Ashley Berger is one of the finest individuals you could ever want, somebody that I just admired to the nth degree. I mean, when my parents would come out here, she and Nicole and Krista were always the, one of the first ones to go over and say hello to them. They were fierce competitors, but they were just, that's just great young ladies. And uh, I can't say enough great things about them. And you put together a great staff uh, as well. Uh, brought many of them from Rutgers. Can, can you reflect back on it, on just the staff? They were so fun to be around, but uh, great basketball people and obviously did a great job recruiting as well. I had been on the, the Final Four for a couple of years, and, I, and that's when you'd watch to see, you know, put your short list together. And one of those names was LaVonda Wagner. And she was on the staff here prior to my coming, and she was leaving. She had an interview at Stanford and Old Dominion. They were quite the powerhouse at the time. And uh, she was go doing that, and I said, why don't, would you just give me a, a half an hour? And she said, no, I'm going out here. I'm leaving, whatever. I said, can you just give me a half an hour? Well, that lasted three hours, and, of course, LaVonda was on her staff and just unbelievable. Kathy McConnell Miller now, who came from Rutgers with me, and Renee Reed was a graduate student who came and finished uh, again. They were three great people who worked so well, and everything was for the good of the cause. And that's rare today. They didn't ask me how much am I going to make, what kind of a car am I going to drive, how much money am I going to get from summer camp. They were about service, and I think that's what made that such a special time. How did you sell this program? Because that, that first recruiting class was dynamite. Mm -hmm. uh, Taja Catchings and Melissa Parker and the, and the like. You know, what was it about this that um, you, you got buy-in from th them as well that, to kind of keep the train gr uh, going for a while? Well, I think I had a lot of help. I had some pretty good friends in, in the East who made some phone calls out here to some of the people out here for them in my behalf. And, uh, you know, some of those coaches and things had heard about us and what we were doing and then I went up and spent two weeks up in Chicago I took uh, three or four of our credit cards and, I, and my own credit cards because I, I didn't have them from the university and I figured I had a month before the bills came in before Carl saw them but I went and visited everybody up there and spent time and that was all you could do that at the time and I think that was key and I, I, no one person does it by themselves I, I had a lot of help and uh, but we knew who we wanted and we were able to get those players and uh, they all fit in and played well and you know that's why we're here today celebrating that and you didn't back down from anybody I mean we had <laughs> UConn on the ropes in the NCAA tournament we had a big lead uh, at, at Tennessee I mean you, you played anybody and everybody um, and that's one of the things that I think is so great about women's basketball in general is the top teams all want to play each other and you were certainly not you know you didn't back down from a challenge no in my younger days I didn't back down from anybody I don't know if that was smart or dumb or stubborn or whatever, but I figured if you're going to be the best and you really want to be the best, then you're going to have to play them. So let's 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 throw it out here on the floor. They're they're five against our five. We had Tennessee on the ropes. We did, and the next thing you know, you know they're manhandling us. And the next rule that came out of that was you couldn't hand touch and whatever. That was the next year, and I said, watch, this is going to be different. And the next year, Tennessee was playing Purdue and we're near opening the season. I was with my son. I said, watch this game. They won't be able to pull that nonsense and of course I think Purdue won that game and those rules changed but again it was a great time uh, we did we enjoyed it and uh, they're good memories and we talk about the community and, and we lost one um, just short time ago Dr. Roger Powell mm -hmm. um, what do you remember about him and you know you had a great uh, group of community people mm -hmm. I remember going that were always on trips and things and he was certainly uh, at the heart of that well, I believed that the team belonged to the community, not to me. Uh, it was the university, belonged, and this is a, a college town. So therefore, getting the community involved was key. That's why people like Doris Higgins and, and Roger Powell and, and so many others were so key with us, and the door was always open to them. They, they wanted to come to practice, they wanted to pop in the office, they wanted to go on a trip, whatever, come on, go with us. 
And I think the kids started to understand or, or felt that they owed a responsibility to others, not just themselves. It wasn't a matter of, hey, I got my scholarship, hooray for me, the hell with you. It was, they felt responsible. And I think that's what the community believed in and felt with them as well. And then we did some crazy things. You know, we jumped in a lake and, <laughs> and, uh, and we had the greatest, the largest Christmas party one time. And we had the, par the Halloween parades, you know. Uh, I was Glenda the Good Witch one year and had uh, a, a tiara, coach in a tiara. Another year I dressed my staff up. You know, we were Winnie the Pooh and that crew. Uh, we, ju we just had a, we had a great time. So what are you up to these days? Well, if the day ends in Y, I'm probably playing golf. All right. Or I am with my two grandchildren, who I absolutely adore, and uh, just enjoying life, spending time with my mother and family, and... Uh, uh, you know, Mike, just in, just enjoying life, just realizing how lucky and fortunate I have been and blessed and hope that, uh, you know, you can still do some things and make a difference. Well, Coach, it's great to see you. Thank you for taking time to talk with us. My pleasure, Mike. Uh, Lini, former Illini head coach Teresa Grants, Hall of Famer. Uh, we'll be back after this. This is Fighting Illini Women's Basketball from Learfield.